There was once a king and queen in a distant land, whose marriage was joyful, but who had no children. The queen pined and prayed for a son or a daughter, but she never had either. One day she went out to the village, veiled as a servant, to ask the advice of a cunning woman. When she reached the cunning woman's hut, she saw that the sun was going down, and so hastily rapped on the door. The old woman invited her in and sat her down and asked what was troubling her. I cannot stay long, for I mustn't be seen after dark. You see, my husband and I have been trying to sire a child for years, but we have none. I beg of your help, I would give anything. I would bear a son, a daughter, or a writhing serpent if it would inherit the kingdom. The old woman nodded her head. I see your troubles. What you must do tonight is take your husband's drinking goblet and place it over the earth in your garden. Come the first light of dawn, and you will find beneath it two close rosebuds. Eat both of these, and you will have your children. At that moment, the thunder pealed, and the rain lashed down, and the queen gave her gift to the woman and left, with the woman calling after her that she hadn't finished. The queen rushed to her castle and did as she was bid. The next day she uncovered the two roses, one red, one white. The first of these she devoured in one bite and oh, how foul and bitter it tasted. So the next of these she ate carefully, petal by petal, and enjoyed its perfumed sweetness. On the morrow she found herself pregnant and she and the king clapped and wept for joy. And in the fullness of time, the queen gave birth. And when she did, oh, how the midwife screeched. For her first child was neither a son nor a daughter, but a writhing serpent, a lindworm, with blood-red scales and crooked cock's talons. The midwife grabbed the creature and hurled it from the window as the queen gave birth again, this time to a beautiful baby boy. Time passed, and the prince grew into a handsome young man who sought for himself a bride. Maidens gathered from throughout the kingdom, but when the time came to present them, a great serpent with blood-red scales burst through the doors. It was the same lindworm that the queen had given birth to all those years before. As first-born prince, the serpent demanded his birthright. The king and queen knowing that he must be married first, hastily arranged for a humble shepherd's daughter to be married off to him. Now, this maiden was only a shepherd's daughter, but she was wise beyond her years. She went to the cunning woman, who sighed, for she remembered the queen's great haste all those years ago, and she told the maiden what to do. On the eve of their wedding night, the maiden went to the church wearing her wedding dress over seven white linen shifts. When the two went to the wedding bed, she shed her dress, and the lindworm asked her, Fair maiden, shed your white linen shift. And she responded, Only if you shed your red scales. This the lindworm did, and she doffed the first of her shifts. And the serpent asked her again, Fair maiden, shed your white linen shift. And again she replied, Only if you shed your red scales. And so it went. And so were doffed six white linen shifts and six red scaled hides until the maiden stood at last before the lindworm in one last shift. And for the last time, the lindworm asked, Fair maiden, shed your white shift. And once again she replied, Only if you shed your red scales. And so off came the last red hide, and so off came the last white shift, and the maiden leapt into action. With water and lye she scrubbed the worm, scrubbed the soft new hide beneath. Scales fell like rose petals as she bundled him into their bed. And so the palace maids found them on the morrow. The maiden in bed, surrounded by snakeskins, in the arms of a handsome prince. The king and queen rejoiced, and there was mirth and merrymaking throughout the kingdom. And so, the Lindworm prince and his shepherd's bride ruled with justice and kindness until the end of their days.